thought that I would venture to broach and talk about this topic. You know, certain folks, this is not just Americans, by the way, but because I hear it the most in America, I wanted to speak about it to this experience, but believe you me, there's an element of this in every country. And so we'll talk about it first here, but then broadly speaking too. You know, there's folks that say that they dislike globalists. First and foremost, I've never really heard the term defined. What does a globalist mean? Yeah, you're going to have to define the term because I'm going to tell you, I'm here to tell you, for those of you who dislike globalists, you sound dumb as a rock to me. Yeah, just as a person who can kind of do some basic thinking with a brain inside of my skull. You sound dumb. Let me tell you why. And this is not pointed at necessarily only Americans. First and foremost, I would think a globalist, a person that they define as being a globalist, is someone that would have maybe favorable feelings about various different countries. I don't know, they never define what a globalist is. So that's my definition of what it is. If they have a better definition, please go right ahead and define it for me. Okay. You have favorable viewpoints about other nations on the planet. Let's start with America. America. You know, men lie, women lie, but numbers do not lie. I love to say that because it's true. America, there are 330 million people. Not everybody is a citizen in the country. There are 330 million people, according to statistics. That's exactly 5% of the global population. Yeah. There's something like eight, over eight or nine billion people. I don't know. It's one of those numbers. But it's in the billions. And you're in the 330 million range. So that's about 5%. Now, anybody who has a brain knows that 5% of a global population is not enough to necessarily have everything that your population is going to need in order to be sustainable. Meaning you're going to have to rely on something that the other 95% have. Now, as it stands to reason, all of these anti-globalist folks, you know, generally the Trump supporters who talk about they're anti-globalist, many of them shop at Walmart. Now here's where this is going to be funny. Nobody's ever told them that 90% of the items in Walmart are not manufactured or made in America. Yeah, most of that stuff, whatever it is you buy, is manufactured somewhere else. It's not made in America. Yeah. So anybody that goes and shops at Walmart, you're technically a globalist. Because you're buying products that aren't made internally in your country. You're supporting globalism. This is why I say a lot of them are dumber than rocks. 
Because at least a rock knows how to sit in a place, kind of, and does what it does. Very kind of really dumb. When it comes to our medications, most of our prescription drugs, they're not made in the United States. I think it was some crazy statistic. I don't want to misquote it, but it was 90% plus of all of our prescription drugs come from foreign countries. Yeah, 90% of all of our prescription drugs come from foreign countries. Yeah, crazy, I know. So if you take any type of prescription medication, you're a globalist because they don't make it here. Yeah. And now the supply is going to be even worse. Did you all hear about that tornado that came through and wrecked havoc at the Pfizer plant? Yeah. When we had that baby formula shortage, the vice president, within 30 days, had to have baby formula shipped from Europe and Southeast Asia. So in order for the mothers, newborn mothers, to give baby formula to their babies, they had to become globalists. This is why I really don't listen to this. The NASDAQ, Dow Jones, the stock market, it's a global market. Yet currency and businesses transact globally. I don't know. Like even when the Bedouin Traders were in the Sahara Desert trading silk and fur before there was any commodities and things of that nature traded fractionally on the stock market. People kind of traded with other tribes and things like that. So even the Bedouin traders back in the day, they were globalists too. You know, people are going to have to stop this kind of really ridiculous stupidity. It doesn't bode well. Because when other people hear Americans talk this type of nationalistic bullshit, what do they do? They go and talk nationalistic bullshit too. And it doesn't make any sense for them to do it just like it doesn't make any sense for us to do it. Because at the end of the day, Everybody is dependent on everybody for something. Nobody has everything, period. It just doesn't work out that way. Africa has a lot of shit. But hey, doesn't Africa always run and ask for people shit too? Yeah, and they have a lot of commodities. They have coffee. They have gold. They have oil. And still, they need to do commerce and trade. It's crazy, you all. This notion that somehow you should be anti-globalist. Yeah, I don't know what the hell that means. And because you have one political party in this country, which has gone fascist for all for all intents and purposes, one party has gone fascist in this country. And they use rhetoric that they're anti-globalists. But hey, do they have any investment in foreign countries? Ask them, do they have any investment? Most people invest in something and don't know that the investment they invest in is also tied to foreign investment. Yeah, so even if you invest in an American company, 
that American company can be investing for, yeah, overseas. Yeah, they can diversify their investment. It's called diversifying your investment. So there's no such thing as somebody that only is a nationalist. Yeah, that's that's an illusion. That's made up. It sounds good to people who are completely ignorant of how the world actually works. Yeah, you tell that kind of thing to folks who believe that there's a bearded dude in the sky that's God and will throw lightning bolts down and strike demons. That's the kind of shit that you tell to those type of ignorant ignoramuses. But the rest of us all know that globally you have to do business. Yeah. You have to do business globally with people who don't look like you, who don't speak your language who don't have your beliefs. If you want to make money, yeah, capitalism is all about money, global markets. Now, it's fine and dandy to want to have things built in your country. That's not a problem. And that should happen. But you don't cut off your nose in spite of your face. You don't go around saying, oh, everything can be done in my country, when you know that's not the case. Yeah, we all know that's not the case. Period. Never has been, and it never will be. No country is completely sustainable. Any of these clowns that tell you, oh, we're completely independent, and we can do this, and we can do that, they are liars. And they only use that rhetoric to demagogue gullible, naive, and easy to deceive people. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even like the term globalist. I don't even know what it means. If it means that you have an appreciation for other countries on the planet outside of just your own country, if that's what they say it means by being a globalist, well, sue me. I guess I fit into being a globalist and proud of it. Because there's 84 nations on the planet. If you want to stay in your tiny little spot, and say that your spot is better than anything else and you know nothing about anything else to make that claim, well, you sound like a person who used to say the world is flat, but never sailed and found out that it wasn't. Yeah, that's what these folks who say they're anti-globalists sound like to me. The folks that used to swear up and down that the world is flat and never went anywhere to find out that it wasn't. They'll be like, my little area, my little town is the best place on earth. And they haven't gone anywhere outside of a five-mile radius. So you wouldn't know, would you now? Yeah. Anti-globalist. Hey, let's go back for a moment and say something about this because I'm sick of hearing it. First and foremost, it sounds stupid as hell. Secondly. And thirdly, for those people who are globalists, who do respect other nations, other customs, cultures, and traditions, it's not an insult or a slight to us at all. Yeah, I don't care that they consider me to be a globalist. I raise my hand and proudly say, thank you very much. I am. Yeah. You can appreciate your own country without trying to put down other people's countries. Yeah. You can want the best for your own citizens without trying to disparage and diminish other people's citizenry. Yeah. This is just, I'm telling you, we have some really low vibrational, low IQ individuals in this country. And that's why we're struggling. 
Not because anybody else on the globe. It's because in house we got some idiots that think they sound smart, but they're not. Yeah, people really think this anti globalist thing is a real thing. I'm like, just remember, Americans, you are 5% of the entire global population. That means there's 95%. That means if 95% says, screw you, we'd be up a creek without a paddle. Can you imagine if everybody just said, screw the Americans? I mean, everybody. If 95% says, screw the 5%, would you have a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out? No. So real adults, the real adults in the room have to go, you know, the national fewer, that kind of stuff, you just listen to it and you're like, yay, it sounds good. But you know, if you really took it to heart and really heeded what these clowns tell you, you wouldn't have shit. Yeah, you wouldn't have shit. Because everybody does business globally. Commerce has always been global. So when they say we shouldn't do business with any other nations, we should only do business with ourselves. I'm like, did they even play Settlers of Catan? These folks are really stupid that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about stupid, stupid. I'm talking about really, really dumb as a rock. Yeah, like, China has a lot of rare earth materials that's needed, like cobalt and things like that for electric vehicles. If you get into a back and forth with this whole nationalistic bullshit, which America and China are on, both of them are on some bullshit. I'm just going to tell you all, both of them are acting goofy. And if both of them get into this bullshit about who can be more nationalistic, you know who loses? The citizenry in both republics. That's who loses. Yeah, that's who loses. Not them, not the elites. Us, the little citizen, we lose out. We get poor. Yeah, we're the ones out on the street in the tents because of that type of bullshit. They'll still be in their bunkers and mansions. They'll be just fine. So that's why I really want to dissuade people who might be hearing that kind of thing and tempted to go that route. Please don't. It's bad. It's bad for all of us. And we should be discouraging our governments from talking that kind of shit. Because we want good partnerships and trading. Yes, competition is good. And wanting to be the best in your ability and skill and craft as a nation is all fine and dandy. But when it starts turning into you're disparaging the other person just because of who they are, that's when it can become a little problematic, to say the least. Because that doesn't agree a good will towards other people. If other people start hearing you say, you know, the Chinese this, or the Iranians this, or the Mexicans this, then those people in those countries are going to say the Americans this. And I hate, I abhor with a passion, broad generalizations. Be very specific. If you have specific individuals or entities or groups that you want to criticize, go for it. But when you start broadly speaking, other people are going to broadly start speaking too. And they're going to make broad generalizations too. And you know, when we start making broad generalizations, they tend not to be true. Yeah, and they just agree of bad feelings. 
Yeah, them people just get bad blood all the time. And you try to do business with them and they're like, well, your people believe that we're like, and then you have to stop them and tell them, it's not all of us. It's a handful of kooks, racists, and clowns that talk that talk. And you have some kooks, clowns, and racists in your country that talk that talk too. Yeah, you have to back people up because people will get defensive. If folks start feeling like they're being attacked as a group, as a country, that's when people get defensive. If you're very specific, like if Americans have a specific issue with the Communist Chinese Party, that's fine. That's a specific target. But when you start saying the Chinese, as though every Chinese person is affiliated with the Communist Party, that's when it could get dicey. Because everybody is not affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party. Be like saying everybody is affiliated with the Republicans or the Democrats. Millions of Americans don't even bother to vote. So be specific is what I'm saying. If you have an issue with certain people who operate in global markets, call those folks out. But to say globalist, it's like what? Are we not supposed to like other countries and other people's customs and traditions as though there's only one custom and tradition we're supposed to follow? Yeah, it kind of sounds ludicrous to me. So firstly, define what a globalist is. I could be wrong. Maybe I don't have the correct definition, but it just, it's too broad of a kind of terminology. I never knew what a globalist was. I still don't to this day. Somebody will say it's somebody that has an appreciation for other nations. Is that a bad thing? You really ask yourself, is that a bad thing to have an appreciation for other countries? And you know, I fault the establishment in America for this to a certain extent. Because the establishment in America has been running around attacking other nations throughout this country's history. Yeah, physically attacking other nations, being imperialistic. And so that type of imperialistic kind of thing they've been on has now trickled down to the senses of the general society. And now the general citizen feels like they can have an imperialistic mindset. But that's not good for business, you know. It's not. Yeah. What you'll do is you'll have people separate from you. A lot of people. They won't want to do any business with you. And if you need something from somebody else, they'll just go, no. We're being nationalists here too. We'll need it for ourselves. And they really won't. They'll just be like, fuck you. Yeah. So we have to be very careful with these type of approaches, thinking, and mindsets that we have. Really, I mean, they're going to just have to be fine. If they have a problem with certain folks, you know, I hear from time to time they say George Soros. That's fine. I don't agree with it, but that's fine. Be specific. But me personally, I have no problem being a globalist. None whatsoever. It's not offensive to me. Because I know what it actually means. Nationalists. Can nationalists make money a little bit here and there on the margins? But not as much as somebody that does business globally. You're never going to make as much money. Say, for instance, you only do business in your country. And somebody else does business in five other countries. Are you going to make as much money doing business only in one country as somebody who does business in five? So it's just basic mathematics. 
Yeah, it's basic numerology here. So the next time you run into somebody that says they're anti-globalist, ask them, if you do business in one country, whatever the country is, say you're a Mexican nationalist and you only want to do business in Mexico, are you going to make as much money as somebody else in Mexico who does business in five different Latin American countries? No, you're not. I'm just saying.